I've been around the block with lasers, CO2, fiber, even a handful of diodes, but I've never seen a diode laser that could actually mark on metal until now. This is the Wayne Lux X2. It claims that it can, and honestly, the results might surprise you. It's a tiny little machine and barely takes up any bench space. Comes in at a budget-friendly price, and yes, it really can put a mark on stainless steel. Let's talk about what worked, what didn't, and where this actually makes sense in a workshop. Quick disclaimer before we dive in, this is not a sponsored video. Wayne Lux did send me this laser to test, but no money exchanged hands. They don't get to see the results early. What you see here is exactly what they'll see, for better or worse. Links, as usual, will be in the description. The Wayne Lux X2 is a compact open frame desktop engraver with modular laser heads. Mine showed up with two a 10 watt blue diode and a one watt infrared head for metal marking. That IR head is what grabbed my attention because usually metal and diode laser don't belong in the same sentence. The work area is 150 by 200 millimeters with a top speed, suggested top speed of around 7,000 millimeters per minute. It runs in Lightburn, Light Gerbil, and Cutlab X and even has a micro SD card slot for untethered jobs. Personally, I mostly stuck with Lightburn. So how did it do? Well, it's a mixed bag, really. First, credit where it's due. Wayne Lux includes a materials guide in the manual. It lays out the speed, power, and interval settings for all their available laser heads. That's huge, because at this price point, you usually get nothing but good luck, have fun. With this, you can build your own Lightburn library from day one. I started out with a samurai mask design, just dragged, dropped, and burned. No fine tuning, and it came out surprisingly clean. Also, cutting through thin stocked worked well, though I found it needed slower speeds and multiple passes to get all the way through the material. Leather has pretty good details, but lots of char. And anodized aluminum business cards turned out really blurry, but I'm sure with some fine tuning, they could really shine. And then came metal. With the IR head installed, I tried several passes on stainless steel. Yes, it does mark. It's not engraving deep like a fiber laser would, but you do get a permanent surface mark. Slower speed, higher power, and multiple passes, that's the formula here. Side by side with my $3,000 fiber laser, the difference is night and day. But for a machine in the three dollars to $400 range, it's actually impressive that it works at all. Now let's talk about the design. The open frame is both a blessing and a curse. On one hand, you can prop it up over larger or odd-shaped objects, but on the other hand, ventilation is non-existent. If you don't want your entire workplace smelling like burnt cowhide and acrylic, you're gonna need an enclosure and or an exhaust fan. Swapping heads is dead simple. Unplug it, unscrew it, swap it, and reattach it. That's it. The IR head even comes with a little focusing tool which makes setup quick and idiot-proof. And trust me, I need idiot-proof some days. So here's what I liked. The open design that gives you flexibility with larger objects a small footprint, which is perfect for a crowded workbench, like mine usually is. Affordable entry point into metal marking. The included materials guide is actually really useful. And the laser head swapping is fast and painless. What's not so great is the work area is really small. 150 by 200 millimeters isn't much. The cooling fan is insanely loud. Seriously, this thing sounds like a jet engine trying to take off from my desk. The firmware was a little bit flaky. My material test grids froze multiple times, even with the stock cable. On metal, you're only marking the surface. If you want something deeper, you need something much more beefier. And again, open frame equals no fume control. Make sure you have proper ventilation, at least, if you're gonna use this. So who's this laser for? I'd say budget-minded makers and crafters who want to customize gifts, patches, acrylic tags, and maybe dabble in metal marking without dropping thousands of dollars on a fiber laser. If you're running a production shop or expecting deep cuts in steel, forget it. Different tools for different jobs. But for a couple hundred bucks, the X2 does exactly what it promises, and it's honestly fun to play with. 
So if you've used this machine, drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear if you've dialed in better settings for stainless. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and as always, change your password. I'll see you nerds in the next one.